Hey, I'm here in Beijing to run through some of the incredible Hutong districts to check out exactly what's going on with them. For the next 45 minutes, I'll take you for a random unedited run through this maze of Hutong so you can see what they now look like while I explain not only the history of them, but also what's happening with them now and answer the question, are they all being destroyed? That'll all happen in the first half of the video. After that, I'm going to uh, keep running. You can keep looking at the hutongs and I'm going to uh, just talk about life in Beijing and what it's like. Okay, before talking about the history of the um, hutongs, let's have a quick talk about the history of Beijing itself, the city. Now, Beijing is actually about 3,000 years old, but it's not always been known as Beijing. Its, it's first name was called Ji. Uh, just a second. Now, here's some live talk. This is the... Um southwestern corner of the whole district and these hutongs kind of wrap around Tiananmen Square and um, fit the Forbidden City in the central area of Beijing. So now I should explain <laughs> uh, this video is actually um, a mixture of live speaking while I was running and also some post-production talking which is what you're hearing now. Okay, so you should be able to tell the difference between the two. Big cars, this one's much clearer and of course I'm not breathing as heavily. So the city of Ji went on for hundreds of years before a huge thing happened. The Mongols arrived. I'm gonna turn left soon if I can and I have no plan. By the way I'm just running through here and I'm my head will probably be shaking a bit. Apologies for that. Um, here's, here we go. Ah, that's a dead end to some toilets. There are lots of public toilets in the Huchongs. And the reason for that is, in the old days, the houses didn't have their own bathrooms. I'm on the edge of the Huchong. Ah. I'm going to have to go out and then come back in. Anyway, the houses didn't have their own bathrooms, so the people would all share bathrooms, share uh, the toilets. And this is... Oh, actually, I don't want to be here. Maybe I'm going to have to go back. No, uh, I'll keep going. This is Beijing Normal University that I'm going past right now. Anyway, the um, the toilets were shared, and that was hundreds of years before communism. People were already living in. China in places that had shared facilities anyway. Alright, I can go in here. This is my second run in Beijing. One each day. Yesterday was from the Forbidden City to the and I run around Tiananmen Square. Another public toilet in here somewhere. Just down there. Back to the history. Uh, yeah, so the Mongols uh, conquered China, called themselves the Yuan Dynasty, knocked down the Ji, city of Ji and rebuilt it as the city of what we know as Beijing right now. Um, and it's the same floor plan, the same city plan is actually still used today. No! Another dead end. This is the trouble with... <sighs> I can't get through there either. I'm gonna to have to go back. Maybe I should have planned this. But no, I'd rather not still. Where else can I go? Now, not only did they rebuild Beijing, <laughs> um, they also called, they made it their capital. It became their capital city. The Beijing that we know now was the, also the capital of the Yuan Dynasty. And the, this is where the Hutongs came in. They started building um, Hutongs, which which is the Mongolian word for water well. So they're like a, a water well uh, surrounded by houses. I think the university messed me up. Also, let me know what you think of this voice mixing. Does it work for you? 
What's that? That's another big building in the middle of it. I want to get away from those big buildings because they're the things that are creating the dead ends. Now, one kilometer. So in those early days, the Yuan days of, of the Yuhuchongs, they were known as being quite prestigious places to live because they were right next to the Forbidden City. The wealthier families of the city uh, lived in them at that point and the, and the rural and poorer people tended to live outside the city, outside the city gates rather than um, in these close places. And inside the Hutongs, every kind of house has got about four houses. There'll be a, a really small alleyway and then it opens up into kind of a communal four house configuration. So yeah, they're very, like in there, they're very much living together. Oh, there's a, I'm gonna go up this one. Now what my live talk was talking about then was the later versions of the Hutongs where the, where the poorer people started living them in, in them as well. And once that started happening, they would share them. There'd be multiple families living in them. But earlier on, it was single families, wealthy families living in the whole uh, block. Now eventually the Yuan dynasty ended. Uh, they were defeated by the Ming dynasty and then subsequently by the um, Qing dynasty after that. And during those dynasties, Beijing grew to be many times bigger than what it was under the Yuan dynasty. And in those subsequent um, periods, the Hutongs just kept on growing. And they weren't, at that point, they weren't just for wealthy people. The, the original Hutongs were on the east and the west side of the city, of the, of the Forbidden City. But then when the city was expanding, the Hutongs started um, moving towards the north and the south. And we're in the south era, um, Hutong right now. This is the south Hutong. Um, but these ones, as you can see, they're much tighter and smaller and they were more, like I said, more designed and built for um, regular people, not, not the wealthy. Now I'm going to talk more about it on the live video. So now this is really more of the true hutongs where it's just a maze of alleyways going everywhere. <laughs> Another toilet. Which way? Down here. I think I'm heading south right now. And I think I'm gonna head east around this corner. But I, yeah, yeah, I know this is east because it's early morning. I'm running into the sun. I can use the sun as a compass easily enough at this time of the day. Now I'll just take this opportunity. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the, video, to the video if you're enjoying it. Thanks, I'll get back to the live talk. What have I done? One and a half K. I'm gonna do about nine, maybe 10k today. So now it also should be noted that the Hutongs were not just places to live. Um, they weren't just residential areas. They also served all sorts of different roles in the city's daily activities. And that is, of course, shops and markets, small businesses, and all kinds of commercial things like that. Um, they were all very vibrant, and they still are today. But you can also they were also used for public gathering places for all kinds of um, activities and things like that. Everything from, um, from festivals to um, public events and things like that. We're actually going to see some of those areas being, um, on about minute 15 or so, so I'm um, going into more of a bigger open um, public area, so stay tuned for that. Traffic jam in the Hutongs. I'm going to have to pass him. And then the, uh, the 19th and 20th century hit uh, everything from with the uh, opium wars through to the decline of the Qing dynasty and everything that came after that. Uh, colonialism, the invasion from Japan and World War II. You know, China was hit pretty, pretty badly. And at the end of that, of course, uh, the civil war between the Kuomintang and the, and the Communist Party in which obviously the Communist Party won. And in the aftermath of all of that, of course, the, the rebuilding efforts um, under the rule of, uh, of Mao was that just to try to mod modernize and try to get things back together and with everything that happened in the 20th century, um, especially under Mao. 
uh, a lot of the hutongs were destroyed. A lot of them were, were taken down to put things like roads through and, and all kinds of things like that. They weren't seen as being a necessary part of uh, China's future, so a lot of them actually were destroyed. And then the rapid urbanization and the huge influx of uh, rural people into the cities meant that uh, there was needed room needed for high-rise apartments. Again, the, the hutongs were pulled down for that. And the ones that were pulled down predominantly were the wealthy family hutongs, all of the original ones. They're basically all gone now. And what we've got left are these, the poorer people's hutongs. There's still many of these on the north and south side. My problem with this one is going to be once I've got to like a, the 5k mark and needing to go home to my hotel again is to find a reasonable way to do that. I'll figure it out as I go. Another toilet. Shale. I should have went down there, I guess. I'll head south next time. But for now, I need to head. Oh, wait, I'm going to just have a look. Here's one of those. See, this will be a dead end, but there's houses just up here. It's a little courtyard. That's what most of the um, houses, how they're done, if they're not opening up to these streets. And the reason I didn't go down there is to just respect the people's privacy. It is their homes. They do get a lot of tourists here. Here's another toilet. And I think it gets a bit, you know, annoying if there's people. Niha, shishia, shishi. There's your Chinese lesson for the day. Saying thank you is a very good thing in China. And, th and shishia is Chinese for thank you. There's tones in there too. They're, um, oh, I think I'm onto a bigger road again. Right, I'm going to cross this road and go into the next district of Hutongs. Now I'm going to talk a bit, a bit more street, street talk for here, so I'm going to get back to the history of the Hutongs um, after this, okay, when I get through this area. People are waking up because they're so close to the um, Tiananmen Square in the Forbidden City. There's a lot of tourists here and they're 99.99% Chinese tourists. There's really not many foreign tourists. I mean, it's still thousands, but compared to the amount of Chinese people who travel inside China, foreign tourists are nothing, <laughs> really. Now, have you ever traveled to China? Um, if you have, please let me know in the comments. And because of that, unlike somewhere like um, <coughs> Bali or Thailand or even um, Rome or Paris, the tourism industry here is not geared towards English speaking people like it is like like Bali for sure. You know, it's all about tourism there for foreigners. So there's many tourist things you can that are here that are kind of a little bit difficult for um for foreigners to even access and not because of political reasons and not because of racism not really not much anyway a little bit of those elements but the main reason is just commercial reasons it's just a, it's just the foreigner market is just very small i'll go up to the gate this is a the southern gate of um, Tiananmen Square. I'm not going in, of course. Whoa, excuse me. <laughs> now this north-south axis isn't really the Hutong. This separates Hutongs on either side of it. But just to show one of the gates. And, there, and this is the, called the north-south axis. I'm on this line that goes, that runs north-south for the whole city. and all the door arches over there they're all aligned with that these doors run straight through the middle of 
Tiananmen Square and then also the Forbidden City and the hills are behind that the temples and things and other gateways to the north and likewise you run down this road and it's a straight line and it will go to all kinds of other um, important buildings and temples but I'm not going to do that I'm going back to the hutongs so yeah back to history for a second now we can uh, get to a position where the hutongs are very protected these hutongs are really going nowhere the ones that are left there they're really part of uh, Beijing's heritage now and there's a real pride for them so once I get a chance I'm going to turn left and dive back into the labyrinth I hope you can hear me all right all right I'm going in here but I should say that since the protection, the Beijing has boomed and property prices have gone up so much that a lot of the original old people have actually needed to move out of them. But as you can probably also see, most people just ignore me. It's not like I'm some, you know, wow, there's a foreigner. I mean, some people do do that, but generally not. So that's about where we are. That's a bit of an update on what's happening in the hutongs in Beijing. Most Chinese people by now, I've seen enough foreigners to be kind of bored of them, bored of us, bored of me. So yeah, you're pretty much left alone. So I'm going to finish the history lesson here. Um, of course, you can see I'm not even halfway through the run yet. Hope you stick with me. There's still a lot to see. There's a lot of other hutongs that I'm going to be going through. I'll keep going here. But the talking from now on is going to be more about personal experiences and things like that. Uh, my opinion of uh, Beijing and generally why I'm doing this and all of that kind of stuff. This is a... looks like it's a, bit a preservation area. Oh, just a sec. One more thing to say. Wow. Well, so I haven't been in most of these places. This is exploring for me. And I've spent days already exploring the hutongs in different on different trips not just this one uh, but because there's so many of them <laughs> I've only scratched the surface yeah so I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching up until this point if you want to leave now of course yeah. that's totally cool and thanks for watching I'll see you next time if you want to keep watching of course please do so as well there's not a lot of activity here oh and of course if you are leaving please don't forget to like if you've enjoyed it, uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more and comment if you want to say anything about anything. I'd love to see, uh, hear any feedback and I'd um, talk to everybody I can. I ran a little bit too far yesterday. It was 20k. But it was good because it, it gave, gave me a chance to um, test just how far the um, GoPro would go for. That was my longest run with the GoPro. Um, before it died and I got to 16 and a half K which is no it's useful to know of course it depends on the speed if I was running a lot quicker I could get more kilometers from the same battery etc etc a lot of motorbikes in here all of them are electric you don't really see petrol motorbikes in China at all anymore certainly not in the cities and there are some but I think they need special permits for pollution control and everything the government really wants to be to have at least motorbikes electrified they're not so strict with cars there are still a lot of petrol cars around but the electric car numbers are also increasing pretty quickly but I don't think it's actually mandated that it has to be electric cars at the same level as, as what they've done with the motorbikes. Where to now? Left, another toilet. Hey pussycat! Flea bag. You hear the cricket? This house has got crickets at the door. I think crickets um, are good luck or something. It's a traditional thing for traditional Chinese to have 
traditional crickets outside their traditional house. <laughs> These, these paving stones are not the most comfortable surface to run on. It's all right. Oh, look, a little stream. Maybe I'll follow it for a while, see where it goes. I'm sure it's full of goldfish. And other carp style fishies but well, there's some black swans wow huh. um, and that's the end of that one into the next one let's just keep going what's down here nothing I think I'll go down this way dead end it feels like a dead end it looks like a dead end Neha Bukayama this is the big one. Another toilet. Toilets here are great. They're mostly squat toilets, which sounds horrific, but trust me, in in Asian countries, you want to develop a habit of being comfortable in a squat toilet because um, they're just much more hygienic. If it's going to be a dirty toilet, you're better off having a no-touch policy and squat toilets give you that. Sit-down toilets, on the other hand, you don't know what you might be sitting on. So that's why a lot of these countries, including China, still have um, another toilet, still have a squat toilet kind of policy, especially when it comes to public toilets. A bit dirty here. So what do you think of the cleanliness around here? Do you see this as a dirty place? It's very much a safe place, I can definitely vouch for that. There is no way anything criminal is going to happen to me here. I am completely safe. And if I was a female runner at night, it would be exactly the same. There is total safety here. Part of the reason for that is, um, you probably know China is crawling with surveillance cameras. But the nice spin-off for them, especially for women, is a huge increase in personal safety. Crime just went. I mean, China's a pretty safe culture even before that. But since that, crime's just that kind of street, you know, violence, violent crime is just non-existent anymore. And um, that's the main reason you won't really hear Chinese complaining about the cameras because they don't feel an intrusion into their lives. But what they do feel is an increase in safety in their lives, which is, you know, more important for most people. smelly there was a rubbish tip that was a smelly area I wouldn't want to live in a hutong close to that a bit more ruiny here I like these ones that guy's got some pride in his area so he's just a resident that lives here he wouldn't be a government worker he would just be going out in the morning. You see a lot of people doing that. Um, uh, now that might be the edge. That doesn't look like hutongs anymore. I think that might be going to more modern 
I'd have to head sort of north to um, get to them again. So I'm not going to do that today. What am I? 5k. I can kind of start winding my way, to, way back, I think. In a different route, of course. Xin Yang. Xin Ching Rang I was trying to say in a very polite way, can you please get out of my way? But the words came out all wrong. I actually said a, a city name, a city that I used to live in in China called Xinyang, which is in the breadbasket of China. And interestingly, or oh, another toilet, or I should say, horrifically, it was the kind of the ground zero in the um, Great Leap Forward where some um, combinations of things um, mostly pride and cock up resulted and also some natural forces like a big drought um, all lined up and hit these um, a, a huge uh, amount of China and tens of millions, tens of millions of people died. Anyway, yeah, Xinjiang was the, was in the center of all of that. What I was trying to say to those people was Qing Rang Yixia. Qing means please, Rang kind of means move, and Yixia means just a little bit. So please move just a little bit. Another toilet, comfortable here. I'm down a bit of a hill here too, which is good. What's she cleaning? Another cricket, did you hear that? Sao Shanghao. He just looked confused. <laughs> Going here. Why I'm filming this is because I run on a treadmill a lot at home because I live in Shenzhen in China and it's uncomfortably hot and sweaty to run there most of the year kind of towards the end of COVID and at first once the novelty wore off it bored me a lot but then I figured out to use videos uh, as scenery on a big screen and it's much better so I've been doing that ever since and these guys around the world and girls too that publish these scenery videos and um, yeah it's an awesome thing and I'm kind of contributing to that so this is obviously a very different lifestyle than the typical quarter acre block of Australia or the US or you know suburban Germany or anywhere like that of course quarter acre blocks are a thing of the past they're really more like a half that size these days an eight acre block of land but these ones here I think that each block of land each parcel is um, occupied entirely by the house itself. And it's probably less than 100 square meters, which is what, 300 square feet ish. Ah, this way. These trees are nice. It's the middle of summer right here right now and um, we've been having a heat wave god it's been so hot so it's nice to run in the morning for two reasons one of them it's just good for my body clock it's good to get the run out of the way then I can just relax and get on with the day and the other reason is it's still hot right now I'm still sweating like a pig <laughs> but it's not as hot it's, as it will be later 
it will be a lot harder. <laughs> there was the feels like temperature, but the other day it was a real temperature in Celsius. Sorry, I don't know the Fahrenheit to any anybody from the States watching. But in Celsius, the real temperature the other day was um, 38, which is not monstrous, but the humidity was 100% or just off that 90 something percent. So the feels like was 49. And my God, that was, I think that was an accurate guess because it was terrible. <laughs> Could not believe how uncomfortable that was. Yeah, 38 degrees with 95% humidity. Yuck. Start Shanghai. Gender. I'm trying to go west. This, these, this area here is more about north-south roads rather than east-west roads but it's okay I can always stick to this go back to this road here now the toilet the toilet run I can call this Lots of construction here, putting some insulation in. I'll try, oh, should I try again? I don't know. I hope I can go west in this one. Yeah, I think I can down here. I might even have to go back to that stream and those rough cobblestones they're just here but I'll, I'll turn here as they slow down I, I think that's made oh it's going back up again another toilet gonna go this way yes all right Definitely a trashy looking area here. I think I'm close-ish to the, the um, rubbish tip. But I can't smell it this time. It's also a slight uphill here. Not much. Beijing is basically deadpan flat. My city of Shenzhen is very undulating. There's a couple of mountains inside the city and um, ridge line, another toilet, ridge lines and things. And um, unless you're running along the coastline, you're gonna have hills everywhere. Okay, back to here. Now's a good time to remind you, if you haven't given the video a like and you're still enjoying watching it now, and that, um, that would be a great time to do so. And if you'd like to comment or subscribe, uh, I'd really appreciate it too. I'd love to hear from you. Back to the video. I might have to wait. I can see the south gate of Tiananmen Square again there. There's a really book, good bookshop over there. And I might wait. No, I'll go. I'll be the, the horrible tourist, Western tourist who ignores the good Chinese laws. While the decent people wait. Sorry to the Western world for giving you a bad image. By the way, Beijing is a reasonably expensive city to visit from a hotel point of view as a guide to that my city in Shenzhen 
it costs about for a hotel you can get a reasonable hotel there for about wow big group here they're not even gonna hear me i'm just gonna have to sneak through here for a hotel you can get a reasonable hotel there for about 40 euros between 35 and 45 euros or you know 40 bucks us um, i'm probably going to go past the restaurant that i got ripped off on last night i should know this being i've lived in china for 10 years it's not really much of a scam but it's definitely a bit of a scam and that is if you just say give me that without first confirming the price especially if it's a cooked meal then you're setting yourself up 100% for them to, them to absolutely rip you off and that's what happened last night and I got it and the price of it was over double what it should have been and I was like no nah, man I know this game I'm not playing that I'll walk out before I pay that but of course that's illegal so we had to negotiate we ended up finding a middle ground he was negotiable which was good by the way I just went past the the access line you probably saw anyway we settled on sort of a halfway between normal prices and his rip-off price so he still got to rip me off but it wasn't too bad and in real dollars like in US dollars and he got here it was only a couple of bucks but I don't try to I'd never bargain with Chinese I never say here's your price what can you do better than that it's not a culture like Nepal or you know Indonesia that you'd need to do that because most of them just give you their pretty much their best price straight up and it's very rude to try to bargain them but when it comes to being actually ripped off the principle of being kind of scammed just makes my blood boil and even if it's only a couple of bucks I don't want to be ripped off I don't want to be scammed you know so yeah so I told him all of that and then he agreed to compromise and I should say I didn't explain much of that myself my girlfriend Cece did because it made her just as angry she feels the pain of being like a you know a rip off and it's not just foreigners that get ripped off that way a lot of those guys and it is a minority most of them won't do that but the ones that do do it they don't care if you're foreign or not they probably do it a bit more if you're foreign but they'll still do it to Chinese as well you've got to confirm the price before you commit to the purchase and even if it's just verbal their their um their word is always very good you know they'll never go back on their on their word of price another public toilet I'm going to go down this one I'm only about if I go in a, a straight line I'm less than a kilometer from the from my hotel so I've got a little bit of time to wind a little bit more show a little bit more this is another very non-tourist residential area you see the brows and undies out on the line <laughs> I think this is a dead end I think I got lost here once earlier it's all right maybe not and no, that's not 
I'm okay. Maybe this one's the dead end. I'll go down it anyway. I'll go down it a little bit and then turn right. That guy's home to his courtyard. Oh, a little seating area. I haven't seen that before. Huh. Here in, in Beijing, to get something reasonable is at least double that. It's almost like, sort of, it's really more like $100 US per night for a reasonable hotel here. Oh, what have I got? Nothing. How are these bikes? Hello, anyhow. It's our Shanghai. Ah, oh, I'm not, I'm not close to, what? I just went past a coffee shop that I, that I went to yesterday and I'm still a while, uh, I'm further away from the hotel than I thought. I don't remember much of the stuff, but I do remember that. A little commercial district in here. Yeah, yeah, those high buildings in the distance. Um, I'm kind of not far from them. Yeah, I'm way too far south still. Jump over. Oh, look at that guy's moving. I thought that was rolling. You should get a lot of I didn't know there was a guy on it. <laughs> so. Hey. So if you watch this far, huh? It's time to do the wrap up. Thank you very much. There's another toilet. Thank you very much. I appreciate your your eyeballs. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you check out my other runs. I'm starting to build a bit of a database of them now. And um, tomorrow will be Tianjin again. I'm back there. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it a lot. What helps me out if you did like it is please hit like, please hit subscribe, which is what every YouTuber will ask you, of course. Um, it really makes a huge difference. <laughs> Honestly, it does. It's crazy. But the other thing that's also really important, if you could do this, please, is comment. Tell me what you think. I wanna know. I would really love some opinions on you. My run in Paris got so many opinions. It was really great. It was really good to get that feedback. There's a, there's a restaurant that ripped me off. Here's my hotel. I'm gonna just go a little bit further because um, I'm not at 9K yet. Another um, toilet. Can I turn down? To the left here. I didn't want to see that guy to be honest, but anyway, it's all right. Just one more lap around here. I thought there was a street off to the left that there would be, but there's not. So I'm just going to turn around and go back to the hotel again in a minute. That one's cool, isn't it? Look at that. It's always good to see some plants. Same with this bamboo one here. They're often coffee shops or tea shops, but sometimes they're just houses too. All right, here's a turn down here. Maybe I could just a little bit. Now I feel like I did the, um, the whole goodbye thing too early. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go around, I have to go around this block now. Don't worry, I won't do the goodbye thing again. <laughs> now it's 9k. Toilet. Heading east, looking for that north street again. Near my friend's restaurant. Uh, 
<sighs> it's a cloudy day today. Yes, I'm talking about the weather. <sighs> cloudy day today, but it should be about. Um, we're back here again. <clears throat> Mid 30s, I think, today. All right. I'll go to my hotel and stop there. And now I won't run past that dude and say hello. And here we are, and don't blame me, CC Josie's place. It's actually quite nice, but it's the Fairy Dreams Hotel, which is kind of funny. All right, 9.3 kilometers, I'm done. See ya, thanks again.